Hey folks, it's your favorite Unity developer Dustin here with Starship Commando Ryan Spur. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. If you are a developer of any kind, you have probably heard the phrase refactor mercilessly. This is part of Don Wells' whole extreme programming thing. But it's a tenet that I have taken pretty seriously over the course of programming for many years here. And the concept is just that anytime you feel like your code is not where you want it to be, you need to refactor. And for anybody that's not familiar, a refactor is just where you take the components of the system you're coding, you sort of reorganize them into an architecture that makes more sense. This is really important when you're developing prototypes. As you develop a prototype, you can either throw it out, or you can keep developing on top of it. And that's what we ended up doing here. I developed sort of a prototype first, and then we just kept stacking more building blocks onto that prototype until we got to the point we're at now. As we near the functional release of the demo, you know, I'm looking at this code and I'm thinking, oh man, this is looking pretty rough because it's a lot of systems that are just sort of bolted onto the side of things in order to make it work from, you know, a functional programming perspective. Uh, and that's fine, but it doesn't lend itself to maintainability or extensibility. And as we move forward, I really want to almost turn this into an engine that we can deliver lots of content on and that users can create a lot of content for. And that foundation of that is really in how well the code is structured, how easily it can be extended later. On screen right now, I have the previous architecture of how we've constructed the ships in code. Previously, I started out with sort of the most obvious thing of calling the class a ship. This has existed since uh, 2021. Ships, they uh, they read in a stats thing, which is a, just a text file that's serialized into a, a plain class in Unity under C Sharp. And then this stores all the stats that are you know modifiable by the user. And that's how we can read in you know everything about a ship so that it stays abstracted. Nothing specific is baked into the game. You can change all this stuff and that's kind of the basis of mod support. This is fine, right, for starting out, but as we added features and functionality, this started to get really bloated. And so this is just a subsection of what was in there to start with. But you can see here the ship, it's tracking its own subsystems, it's tracking power settings, it's tracking, it's, it's got references to the rigid body so it can move itself, it's firing its own weapons, it's doing all these things. And if you're familiar with programming, you know that this is bad. You want uh, something called single responsibility where class kind of does like one thing if it needs more functionality you can uh, extend it or you can write another component to perform that functionality so that there's not a confusing amount of different functionality present in a class as we built this up this is just how it ended up you know in my infinite laziness i did not change it until now I was looking at the code a couple weeks ago and I decided to just go ahead and start it on a refactor. Looking through here again, you can see the ship reads in the ship stats, builds itself, which is also not so good doing something called auto rig. You can see that method named there and the auto rig would just traverse the hierarchy of the model and the uh, ship prefabs in Unity and then it would set the whole ship up in one shot using that method and then I had to have a bunch of conditionals well if it doesn't have this then don't do that if it, if it does have this then do this extra thing not good right if we want to have like carriers and fighters and really specific uh, ships that do like a, a special thing right I don't want to have to write all these corner cases and then over here we have weapons the weapons are just like a, another class right and then uh, I have some derived types uh, for each type of weapon and then we had subsystems so this was the separation it was ship Weapon, subsystem. And really, the subsystem thing uh, was just for damaging the subsystem and then controlling like some of the effects when the subsystem gets damaged. And so like these classes down there, sensor, reactor, engine, shield, weapon, these didn't really control the subsystem the way that you would expect them to. Because again, the ship class was controlling the subsystems like power and what the subsystem actually did. These classes were merely there. They were just, again, bolted onto the side to support being able to damage a subsystem. That does not make any sense, right? It, these should be controlling the system itself. And then over here, just to cover this real quick, I have a, a derived class of ship that's player ship because I ran into things where I wanted the player to be able to do certain things, have that data be read out to the scriptable objects I use to link uh, data and events together. Didn't play nicely with the base ship class because I'd have to do a bunch of extra stuff there, so I wrote a drive class. So this is a mess, 
really. Uh, it doesn't make sense. Too many things are doing either something that doesn't make sense for their name, or they're doing too many things, no! uh, or they're doing it in a way that is just stupid. No! Okay, and this happens when you're prototyping, and it's important not to get an ego about this, right? Like, I'm willing to just say this is a really stupid setup. No! And it just comes from building on a prototype for two, three years. And it's important to just be able to take a step back and say, you know what, this is bad. And that's okay. Uh, programming is a very fluid, dynamic thing, and it should be. It, if you're not happy with a piece of code, throw it out. Garbage day! Huh? No! Ah! Rewrite it. That's what we have Git for, okay? Make sure you're, you know, you're doing your commits so you can always roll back. <laughs> you know, for this refactor, I just made another branch, right? So there's no harm, no foul if it doesn't work out. Just go into it. If you've got a big honking thing like this, just start breaking it down. And that's exactly what I did. So instead of a ship class, now we have a base ship. And this, its only job is to say, I am a ship. Without any other components, it's just a, it's a thing, it exists, it's a ship. And that's exactly how it should be. Okay, so just the, the most basic things are here. I have a renderer. How am I represented in the world? I keep a list of the systems attached to the ship. This can be empty, or it can be populated with 100,000 systems. Doesn't matter. You know, the class name, certain things like that that are, again, still fed in through ship stats. That stayed. Of course, you can see that here again. That paradigm was fine, so we keep that. So the ship reads in its stats, and then it doesn't really care what systems are attached to it versus the old architecture. This does not care what's attached to it. This can exist by itself. Uh, it won't do anything. I'm not sure what to do with my hands. But it can exist by itself and be a ship. And that is important because this can be used to extend out to, first of all, testing. You can mock this up and this can be a real ship in the game for use in testing without any other attached systems. You know, even though it's not something we put in the game, it's still something I can use to uh, test other functionality. This allows for creating anything that could be just remotely classified as a spaceship. Uh, a shuttle, a fighter, an escape pod, a carrier, a giant floating orbital station could be classified as a ship. You know, I can present it to the user any way I want, but it can, on the back end, be a ship. Okay, and that's how you want it. Um, because that provides lots of extensibility. So then as we move down, we have this thing called a ship system, okay, which is under the hood, it's just an abstract class, which means that it doesn't exist by itself. It has to be derived from in order to be useful. So that's sort of like saying vehicle. If you were to say, I have a vehicle, well, someone might ask you, well, what kind? Okay, because it's not really useful to say, I have a vehicle. That's great, but what kind of vehicle is it? So that's kind of what we're looking at here too. Um, this describes sort of the most basic ship system. you basic. Right, and there's not much here. What am I attached to? Am I ready to go? And then a simple initialize method. Now this is important if you're a programmer. This is kind of what you want to go for because this helps you decouple things. This initialize can be overridden by whatever derives from the ship system. But then ship base, all it needs to do is say, give me all the systems and initialize them. Don't care what they are, don't care what they do. If it derives from ship system, it's gonna call this initialize when the ship base fires up, done. That enables tons of functionality. I can write anything I want on top of this. The ship does not care what it is. Uh, you know, it can be a teleportation drive for all we care or whatever it is later on. And it just gets set up the same way. Uh, so perfect, right? And then from this ship system, I created another one called ship major system, which is something I wanted to do to compartmentalize away systems that can be damaged. Okay, so you can have a ship system that, uh, for instance, is hit points right here. This is not a damageable system. It just tracks the ship's hit points, the hull hit points, right? So when the ship takes damage it, as a whole, this hit points system just tracks the hull hit points remaining. Right? That's not a subsystem that needs to be damaged. That's a component of a ship that's going to track something. Okay, And then this damage control one is another example of a plain ship system. Okay, This is how I'm handling the damage control teams that you send to subsystems that are taking. Okay? So the major systems are things like shields, weapons, engines, sensors, 
those things that have lots more functionality in them and they can be targeted and damaged. So when you're looking at uh, targeting different things in space, the game is looking for these specific classes of items that it can let you target, okay? And so then again, I can derive from this to ship weapons or anything else. And so this describes a major system. And so it has all these functionalities now. Wow, it's almost like that makes sense. All this is separated out and the things do exactly what you expect them to do and they don't do anything that they shouldn't be doing. They stay in their lane. So if you're setting up dependencies, just make sure that if you want communication between things, set it up in a way where it doesn't need it, okay? So that this component can exist without this other component. If you cannot make that happen, then you probably have a situation where you want to rethink what exactly you're doing. Maybe you need to break this down into even more classes. Okay. So the only reason this communicates with the reactor is because of this being able to consume power and generate heat. So the reactor handles uh, power and heat, and so the weapons communicates. But if the reactor is not there, which ship needs a reactor, but technically, according to this architecture, we don't have to attach a reactor to a ship. So if the reactor is not there, the weapons doesn't care. It sends the events sends the method calls, but if it doesn't receive, if, if it's not received by anything, that's okay. And so that's really the important part is that you can have this component, say call a method over here, but do not have it rely on the result of that. Make sure you've kept it separated to where the weapons just lets the reactor know, hello, I've generated some heat. But if there's nobody on the other end of the line to, to take that, that heat consumption down in the notebook, it doesn't matter, okay? That's what we're going for. Here we go, there's weapon stats. That's another kind of serializable thing. You can edit in the tables, the, the JSON files that are in the game. Um, those are also user exposed. So if you want to play around with weapons, you can. You can change all these different things about weapons. You can create your own weapons. Um, and then shield, of course, like all these things. I could keep going on and on and on, but you get the idea. Each of these systems now is a discrete unit that does its job and no other jobs. It may communicate with other parts, but like I said, with the weapons and reactor thing, it doesn't care if the receiver of that message is even there or not, okay? So this system really has improved the readability and maintainability of this code tremendously. Now, at first glance, you might look at this and say, oh boy, well, this one looks a lot more complicated. It might look more complicated, and you want to have smaller, discrete components that just do one job. Single responsibility principle. Now, I could talk about this for hours and hours. There's there's so much more code. This is a small subset of what exists. This doesn't go into like you know how these things talk to input or rendering or anything else. Uh, if you're curious and this piques your interest, or if you're a developer yourself and you want to ask me some questions, please join the Discord. Ping me. Uh, I'm Sniffleheim in the Discord. You can bother me anytime you want. Uh, I might not answer you depending on the time, but I'll definitely get back to you because I, I like talking about code. It's, it's my passion. That's all I got. I'll quit talking now. You guys have a good one. Like, comment, subscribe, all the YouTube things. We really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching.